Hey, what's up you guys? <clears throat> it's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 16 of Five Survive by Holly Jackson. Um, we are making a good dip in this book. Well, I should hold it this way because this is the beginning of the book, but that's how like how much we have left to go. Um, there are 40 chapters in this. We're on chapter 16 now, so we're doing pretty dang good um, of getting close to halfway there, I think. I'm not really good with math or numbers right now. <laughs> but anyways, let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics or foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 16. Escape was a strange word, wasn't it? One of those ones that tripped right up. Funny like resource, but not in the same way. A word that if you thought it too much grew spiky and nonsensical in your head. Please someone say something else. Escape. 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 Just to float an alternative, Simon said from the sofa, his head bouncing back against the mattress. Thank you, Simon. Why don't we just wait this whole thing out here in the RV? Look, sunrise must be at about 6 a.m., right? When there's light, the sniper loses his advantage because we'll all be able to see where he is. Then we can escape. There it was again. And because it's morning, we're more likely to be able to flag down help. He sat back, hands raised, as though his plans, his plan were there. Sitting on top of them, he held out like an offering. My mom will give up the name before sunrise. Oliver shook his head, dismissing the plan. All the witnesses will be killed, Maddie said, a grim set to her jaw. Mom would be responsible for someone dying. Someone dying. Red's chest tightened again. Right. Simon nodded, raising his hands as the plan even higher. And that's very sad for the witnesses, of course. Poor guy. But it's not really our fault, and I'd prefer the six of us to survive. We're safest in the RV. I mean, come on. Simon glanced around. Arthur, Red, he said, looking for an agreement in their eyes, but Red didn't agree. She couldn't. She looked down. I think we should do what Oliver says, she answered, keeping her voice flat. What other choice was there? Oliver was in charge, the natural leader, the highest value. This was about surviving, and the RV wasn't safe no matter how hard they pretended. Simon dropped his hands, a flicker of betrayal in his eyes as he shot them at Red. He shrugged it off and returned to his beer. Majority rules. Oliver clapped his hands, returning to business. Let's start thinking about how we can escape then. Escape. Or get help, Maddie added. Arthur sighed, removing his glasses to wipe them against his sweatshirt. Both seem pretty impossible right now. No cell service, no one around. A rifle, we don't know where he is out there in the darkness. A pause. He has all of the cards. Oliver exhaled, conceding the point, <clears throat> and Red bet he didn't like being someone without any cards. Cards. Pokemon cards. Was that the pattern in the curtains? If she thought about that, then she couldn't think about anything worse. Like what was happening here. The static filled the room again in the absence of voices, and Oliver glanced down at the walkie-talkie. Maybe he doesn't have all the cards, he said, scooping the walkie-talkie up, cradling it between his hands like he's it was spun from glass we have this he overlooked something here he's given us a communication device his voice picked up speed mouth trying to keep up as red <clears throat> can't we use it to contact someone walkie-talkies don't need cell service i mean clearly and don't emergency services use walkie-talkies anyway can't we somehow con connect this to the police radio and ask for help can't believe we didn't think of that sooner sooner simon sat forward that's a plan i can get on board with it didn't work like that none of it worked like that how could how would we oliver trailed off studying the lcd display what's wrong red arthur had been watching her he must have read it in her eyes she thought she was better at keeping a straight face she had enough practice i'm sorry she began looking at maddie instead of oliver the softer of the little voice two-way radios don't work like that the radio frequencies are regulated emergency services like the police have their own frequencies specifically so they don't get interference from other signals like you're suggesting right i know oliver said had he felt, had he though? But in an emergency, can't we make it do that? There was a simple answer to that that one Oliver didn't want to hear, but he was asking. So no, so no, she said, looking away from him as she did, so her eyes didn't bully a different person out of her. No, it's not physically possible to make the radio transmit on an emergency frequency that the police use. Fuck was Oliver's response. How do you know, Raina turned to Red, but Oliver answered for her. Her mom was a cop. And that was, that was still hurt. 
It always did, but that wasn't why she knew so much about walkie-talkies. Well, not directly. Her mom was a cop, but so was Red when they played that game together, and that was how she knew. Four days after the funeral, Red found a box in the attic, a box of her mom's old stuff, and there, nestled between old jackets and shoes, were the walkie-talkies, a piece of masking tape across the back of each, one with mom and Red. She hadn't been looking for them, not really, just looking to preserve her mom for another day, and then another. Red left her own walkie-talkie there took the one labeled mom down to her room. She stole a screwdriver from her dad. He was already mostly lost by then, but he couldn't still pretend to function, still went to work. And in the quiet of her room, past midnight, she took it apart, the walkie-talkie, piece by piece, wire by wire, but she never found her mom's voice hiding inside. It's probably an, an FRS radio, she said, approaching Oliver, holding her hand out, waiting for him to let go. He placed it in her hand, and she felt the familiar weight of the device. She knew it inside and out. FRS, Oliver said, not stepping back like he couldn't be too far from the walkie-talkie, couldn't trust her to even hold it. Family radio service, she said. That's the radio frequencies most amateur devices like this use. If you were, if I remember right, she did remember right. How could she ever forget this? It has 22 channels. She knew more than that. The that those 22 channels were found somewhere between 462 and, and 467 megahertz and the speaker also functioned as a microphone built from the same bones a magnet a coil of wire a cone made of plastic she leaned learned all of that putting mom's walkie-talkie back together again until it turned and hissed at her for days that was all she did took it apart rebuilt it and did it again on her mom's birthday that year after and that the one after that you couldn't do that with dead moms, though. Rebuild them. They stayed gone. So we can't use it to contact anyone else, Oliver asked, still standing too close. Red stepped back if he wasn't going to. Yes, we could, she said, and the light returned in Oliver's eyes. In theory, if someone else is using another two-way radio, the same frequency channel within range, we could be able to talk to them. The sniper is using channel three. Red and her mom always used number six. For some reason, it was lucky, at least until it wasn't anymore. What's the range? Raina asked, studying Red, as though she couldn't wait for an answer. Red sighed, unable to give them what they wanted. It's not great with something like this, she said. It depends on the terrain, the weather, and how many trees and buildings are in the way, but she thought about it. A couple of miles, maybe a few at most. Red, her mom, once picked up interference from a wedding planner, barking orders down her aunt down her end must have been some place close the groom had been late apparently but red pretended it was a surveillance mission and they took notes laughing the kind of laugh that hurt during and after oh reina said in response no it wasn't good news not for them they were in the middle of nowhere a range of three miles still left them pretty much in nowhere but there was there were houses and farms within all of that nowhere reina pulled out her phone checking the time it's almost 1 a.m she said deflating i guess it's unlikely anyone will be out using a walkie-talkie silent agreement from the rest of them the walkie-talkie laughing at them from red's hands unlikely unlikely but they might red said or someone might have a baby monitor on its range we could keep cycling through the channels if we pick up any interference red hadn't found her mom's voice on channel six or any of the others she tried but it was harder when the person you were looking for wasn't alive yes oliver snapped his fingers at her smile crackling cracking his face that is what i'm talking about some initiative okay red you're in charge of the walkie-talkie you cycle through the channels but make sure you always return to three every couple of minutes or so in case we miss the sniper trying to talk to us we don't want him to know what we're up to Red glowed, despite herself, nodding to as she accepted the order from Oliver. Was she useful? What a plot twist that was. A smile from Maddie too, full house. Red bet Arthur was secretly impressed as well. Look at her knowing stuff. Right, focus. There was a man with a rifle outside and Red was trying to be useful. She wouldn't want to die, not like that, although she supposed... It wouldn't take two shots to the back of the head this time, just the one, just anywhere. Red pressed the menu button and then the plus button on the right, switching to channel four instead, and the empty static there. She could pretend there. the tone of the static changed each time, a different swirl of sound like a new song, but it didn't. It sounded the same. An empty hiss, up to five now, then six. Red waited longer there just in case. Okay, Oliver said, looking around at the group. He stepped over to the sofa and in one quick motion removed the beer bottle from Simon's hand, walking it over to the kitchen counter. So Red is on part one of the plan trying to get outside help, but we need part two, an escape plan. Escape. 
stop that up to channel eight now she should go back to three and make sure the sniper wasn't trying to talk to them like our mom always says oliver turned to maddie a plan must have two parts and you must have to make sure either way plays out in your favor that's win-win maddie said completing it for him yes Catherine lavoy always had a plan red knew that birthday presents and reserves two different flavors of ice cream red herself preferred to loot the lose-lose system no plan at all and no backups she pressed the down button to go back to three to check for the sniper's voice nothing back up to 11 click static click and that and what's his the plan simon said his words more slurred now but red couldn't tell if he was putting it on to irritate oliver you're the leader the most high value person here what is your brilliant plan to escape the active shooter out there in the pitch black who can see us but we can't see him Oliver's jaw snapped open, hanging a jar as his eyes spooled in his head again, working loose. That's it, he laughed, slapping one hand against his hip. That's his only advantage, that we don't know where he is. I'd say his, van his advantage is the giant fucking rifle with the laser, Simon muttered. Oliver didn't hear him or didn't listen. That's a plan. That's all we have to do. Work out exactly where he is. Where he is out there. Find the sniper. That is the end of this chapter. I will see you guys in the next video.